Thanks for joining us on this episode of Eastern Indiana Works. I'm Eric Marsh. Glad you're able to join us and glad we have a chance to talk to Mike Rao, uh, President and CEO of Eastern Indiana Works. We haven't had a chance to talk for a little bit. Thanks for spending some time today. Oh, thank you, Eric. Let's kind of jump into this. Um, we haven't had a chance to talk for a while. A number of months ago, there was an announcement made. Eastern Indiana Works garnered a $1.5 million grant over three years um, to help people get back into the workforce who had been affected by the opioid crisis. Can you give us an update on where that stands? Sure. Well, uh, I'm pleased to announce that we've had uh, a good number of enrollments already uh, due to the uh, good work of our exceptional team. And uh, those individuals are being processed uh, into employment through uh, the work experience program, which matches this grant perfectly uh, in, in an, our effort to transition those who struggle with addictions into sustainable long-term employment. Um, this is modeled a little bit after a program that, that Belden began, and Belden's mm -hmm. been a partner with you all in this. Yes. Um, when most people get a grant, everything's already laid out on paper. That's how you get the grant. You yes. lay out exactly what's going on. Sometimes in your world, when you're dealing with individuals and dealing with people, things aren't quite so black and white. How much flexibility do you have to work through this and, and maybe make some changes if needed? Sure. Uh, we have uh, great flexibility with each individual that enrolls in this um, to, to meet their needs at the ground level to ensure that they connect with the employers that they uh, land the job and that they are uh, uh, engaged in sustainable long-term employment with that particular employer. Uh, if there are issues, then we have the flexibility to come in and help that individual address those issues and get back on track. So it's, it's, there is uh, a, a very strict, re strict regulatory uh, structure in place, mm -hmm. as there are with all grants. But uh, on the individual level, uh, we have a lot of flexibility. There's always changes. We, you and I have been talking and working together for about a year and a half or so now. Mm -hmm. During that time, there's always been changes going on with Eastern Indiana Works. You all are yes. not a static organization. <laughs> we're not. Uh, we're, a, we're a mobile, cross-functional workforce development board. Uh, we can cross state lines to provide uh, workforce development services and, and work with organizations across state lines. We're very, um, we're very flexible. We want to improve our fluidity in terms of deliveries because uh, we view each individual as very unique. And so we don't take a cookie cutter approach to service delivery. Uh, we listen to each individual very carefully and try to meet their unique needs at the ground level. You've talked about changing the idea that work one is the unemployment office into the employment office. What are some of the ways that you all have made changes with that organization that really affect how people are able to get services? Well, one thing that I've heard over and over is how impressed people are with the TV show, that, uh, and we're very grateful to you and your team, Eric, uh, for the production of this show. Uh, we've, we're getting the word out. Uh, we had a messaging problem uh, that has been addressed by uh, you and your team. So we're grateful for the, the, the partnership there. Uh, we need to get the message out that we are the employment office um, and, and get the stigma off of the Work One uh, brand. So Eastern Indiana Works resonates across the region, but also throughout the state and the nation that the, the citizens uh, and, and residents of eastern Indiana work. So that's a very good, positive message that we want to send. And it's the, uh, the, the uh, beginning of all our messaging uh, efforts from this point on. There's always been talk from people <coughs> that if the public sector and the private sector could just get together, that's where things would work better. That's really what Eastern Indiana Works is. It's, it's not all government, it's not all private. This is a collaboration. It is, and our Regional Workforce Development Board uh, brings together people from all sectors, uh, including labor, uh, education, government, um, and, and the private sector uh, to solve problems. So they craft the high-level strategy that we implement as Eastern Indiana Works 
uh, throughout the region. You're watching Eastern Indiana Works. We're talking with Mike Rao, president and CEO of, of the board. Um, as, as you've grown, and, and I would say that you have grown, you've really got a nice team of people behind you. Um, talk about a little bit about some of the areas that you've been able to put them in to kind of tackle this, this employment problem here. Sure. Um, yes, I, we're blessed to have exceptional professionals with us. Um, and, and what we've tried to do is, is foster a culture of cross-functionality that is focused on sacrificial service. So, uh, for instance, um, Caitlin, who people will hear from on, on this show mm -hmm. uh, a little bit later, um, will uh, focus not just on the addictions grant, but also on employer engagement. She'll join, join with Denny Cochran and his team to focus on employer engagement and address employer uh, uh, challenges to hiring. So uh, all that information that comes in from these different individuals um, is invaluable to us as a board. Um, and so it is really real time, boots on the ground, employer driven data that we can base our decisions on. Uh, rather than uh, the lag time that normally exists with uh, labor market reports, et cetera, those data reports, which are great reports, but there is a lag time there, and we don't want to get behind the curve if, if things are shifting. We want to know at the point of shift when they, uh, we need to make some changes. When you're talking about <coughs> employment, unemployment numbers, the numbers seem very low to people, which means you're beginning to work with some of the hardest people that there are to get into or back into the workforce. What some of the strategies that you all are working on to begin to help get to even, even fuller employment than most people think? Because right now, most people would say, we have full employment. Yes. yes, from an economist standpoint, we do. Um, the reality is that there are seven to 10,000 individuals in our region alone that, is, uh, that are of working age that aren't seeking employment actively. So our strategy is to reinforce, uh, it's a combination of being um, a psychological strategy, a, uh, a business strategy, a, uh, a programmatic strategy, but we want to resonate in people's minds that work adds value to the human existence. That if you're not working, you're really missing out on, on some things in life. Um, and so we want to emphasize that message ad nauseum uh, so that people embrace it. Um, we, our biggest uh, challenge is probably in the pop culture that over and over resonates that work is for dumb people and that you got to get over on the man and you know figure out a way to win the lottery and whatever uh, and and that just does not work for people so we uh, you lose a lot in terms of relationships and quality of life if you're not working so we want to emphasize that to people that um, uh, work adds value to the human existence so that's a major um, core function strategy that we have. People are always concerned that organizations like yours kind of work in a silo sometimes. We've mm -hmm. already talked about that, you, that this is a public-private partnership. Mm -hmm. But what is your relationship with other organizations like ERPSI, which is a, uh, mm -hmm. a, a multi-county organization, with the economic development um, directors in the region. What's your relationship with them and how are you all doing coordination? W those relationships are crucial uh, to our success. So we maintain a very close uh, relationship that is rooted to sacrificial service with each one of those organizations, whether it's ERPSI or uh, the, the regional partnership that Mindy Kenworthy heads up. Both Jeff Plaster with ERPSI and Mindy Kenworthy are on our board of directors. Uh, I attend their, I'm on Mindy's board of directors. I, I'm also, I work with Jeff Plaster's board of directors. So there is constant communication between all these, uh, these partners. Also the CTEs, the school districts, the, uh, the private sector companies on the employer engagement side, um, and, and labor. Uh, I meet with the labor um, representatives frequently to, to discern what their challenges are. Uh, so we have a, a truly 
uh, broad, the broadest spectrum of sectors uh, that we work with. As we go through the rest of this show and into the next couple, we're going to meet some of Mike's team. We've talked to Mike, we've even talked to Denny Cochran a couple of times, but we're going to meet some of the other team that works through Eastern Indiana Works with employers as well as employees so we can get Eastern Indiana to the fullest possible employment. Be back with more on Eastern Indiana Works. Thanks for joining us on Eastern Indiana Works. I have a chance to speak with Denny Cochran, Vice President of Employer Engagement. Thanks for spending some time with us. Well, thanks for having me. We've had a chance to talk to you during our course of time of working with this program, but, but let's remind people who you are, what you do. Employer engagement, what does that mean? Sure, um, and, and like you said, Eric, I'm, I'm Denny Cochran, I'm Vice President of Employer Engagement. And my role is to serve the employers of Region 6, which is nine counties, as we all know. Mm -hmm. um, but what my agenda is to go in and serve those employers the best that we can. And when I do go in, I want to be able to provide them something. I want to add value to that employer. So we have some programs that are really cool um, that has helped out several employers within Region 6 okay. um, whenever they decide to utilize us. The, the one that we've talked about a lot is the work experience program. For those who are new to the program, don't know what that is, talk a little bit about that program because I think it's interesting. Yeah, great program um, and quite honestly I think we're the only region within the state of Indiana that are actually offering this and when I go into the employer I try to simplify things. Um, I, I can call it the try before you buy program. Um, yes it's the work experience but to simplify it try them before you buy them, and it's been very effective. Um, and what that is, is the employer can bring someone in, pay for four weeks of wages, we will, um, okay. pay for the worker's comp, and hopefully it's a good fit. The employer gets to try the job seeker out, the job seeker gets to try the employer out, mm -hmm. and if it's a good fit after the four week work experience, um, they'll bring them on full time. Now, if people are hearing this for the first time, they're going, okay, try before you buy, but how do you get those people in the door? How, how does the employer know that that person's going to walk through the door with the basic skill set that they need? What's on the front end of that with you all? Sure. It's, um, there's a, a website, indianacareerconnect.com, and a lot of the employers can post jobs on that um, website and when we go into the employer say hey post that job on that website and you can usually get some hits off of it or maybe it's a job seeker that's applied to this employer mm -hmm. um, they interview that um, in job seeker mm -hmm. they said hey Denny what do you think about doing a work experience we can try before we buy this person and we call that a re uh, reversal to where we'll send them to one of our career coaches get them enrolled into the work experience program and then we um, put them into the employer and four weeks later hopefully it's a good fit and they'll hire them on full time. So you all have a chance to actually work with the clients before they end up in the employers Yes, our, our career coach will um, make sure that they meet any of those barriers to get enrolled with the work experience and quite honestly most of them can. So. 
besides the work experience program, um, what other value can you bring when you walk into an employer? Sure. Um, hey, employers are screaming for employees. So um, we'll, we'll provide job fairs for the employers. If they say, hey, we would like to um, have a job fair at whether it be one of our offices, we can line that up. We'll advertise uh, to make sure we get enough traffic coming to them to make it worth their while. And that's been effective. And also, we can, um, the next level jobs, which is the governor's initiative, mm -hmm. we've been able to go into the employers since we have the relationship. Um, Department of Workforce Development has allowed us to be more proactive in that initiative. So we can go into the employers and we can actually help them with training dollars through the next level jobs to train maybe those entry level positions mm -hmm. to where they can make more wages. Are you finding that entry-level positions are still necessary and are there still a lot of employers looking for that entry-level person? And quite honestly with the employers that we're working with that's been the main concern. They, we need someone that's going to show up each day for that entry-level position mm -hmm. and if they prove themselves and that's what's cool about the work experience program mm -hmm. once they try them before they buy them then they can bring them in and they can actually train them themselves and then bring them up to the next level. One of the things you work with is you say you work in high-wage high-demand positions. Talk about what that looks like here in Region 6? Sure. Um, the high wage and what I normally talk to the employers about is that high wage would be $15 an hour or more um, starting out that entry level position because and, and here's the way I look at it that single parent mom going into a, a job mm -hmm. a manufacturing job or whatever the case might be if they're getting paid 10 or $12 an hour that's not enough to pay for daycare. Um, so the, the high wage is $15 an hour with an incentive to try and get up to closer to the $20 an hour mark. Um, the high demand, um, what we normally do is 50 employees or more um, would be the high demand positions for our, for our region and, and that's who I normally go into and work with. Do you normally walk into the employer or does the employer reach out to you first? Um, it's a little of both. I, I've been in this position for about four and a half years and th this is a neat thing as I've built the relationships over those um, years. Um, a lot of the employers are actually reaching out to me um, and then whenever I do find out that maybe there's a new HR person at one of the companies that I was working with, mm -hmm. then I'll go reach out to them. Cool. Thanks for your time. Denny Cochran, Vice President of Employer Engagement for Eastern Indiana Works. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Eastern Indiana Works, where we're taking a little time to actually meet some of the people that you may not see on a regular basis. This is an organization that helps employers, uh, employees, and there are people who have to keep things going. Besides the folks that are out in the field, there are people who really make it work. Stephanie is one of those people. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Did I describe to a certain extent? what you do well? Exactly, yeah. I'm kind of behind the scenes. I'm not um, out in the offices. I'm kind of behind checking on things, seeing some admin things, mm -hmm. um, seeing what the community, we just want to better the community. Let's get 
the workforce going and let's do some things to make it better. So there are people who have to do some research, have some conversations with folks, mm -hmm. get the pulse. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you were telling me is you, you talk to people from some of the local chambers. Correct. What's that about? Um, I want to see what's going on in their neighborhood. You know, we serve a nine county region, so every county is different, you know. So we need to, we need to check and see what successes they're having, where they're having issues, where can we help you, where can we come into the community and, and, and help. Okay. As, as you've gone through this, and you say there's some differences, and there are. This is a nine-county mm -hmm. area. What are you seeing as, as some of the things that you all have helped get better over the last couple of years even? I think that we are more accessible to the community. Um, I mean, we've gone to libraries, we'll go to food pantries, we'll go, where can we find people that need help? Okay. And we want, we want to be there and have a face for them. You know, we'll help get you. Maybe we can, we can offer training for you. Maybe we can, um, we know of something that will help you, some job in your area that will help you that you, maybe you're not aware of. There are, you know, um, those people that they just find themselves stuck. They don't know. They don't know what to do. How mm -hmm. can I get back into the workforce? Maybe I've been out of it for a long time. Right. Maybe um, the company closed down or something. Mm -hmm. um, and and we like to get in there, help them. Let's 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 make this. Let's make your area better. Let's get people working. Let's make it better than when we got here. That's, That's got to be one of the hardest parts. Someone who has had a job for 15, 18, 20 mm -hmm. years, same job, mm -hmm. they haven't done anything wrong. They've right. shown up every day, they've done their job, suddenly the right. employer decides to go away. They really haven't had to deal with the employment office right. or signing up for benefits or anything right. like that, and they don't know where to start. They don't. And you know, you can come in and, I mean, we have career coaches, we have, you know, people that are right there that can, that can help they can guide you. you. Not everybody's the same. Not everybody needs the same help or, you know, they may know how to put a resume together. Some people do, some people don't. Mm -hmm. So we just move on to, you know, take it down the path and, and get you where you need to be. Okay. If somebody needs to reach out to you all, what's the best way to find you? Um, well, we have a website. We okay. have this show. We have representation in every county. In um, every county, in all nine counties. We have, yeah. There's Well, in Union, they have to go um, to one of the other ones, but we go mobily to there. So basically we do have When you say all, you go mobily, what do you do? Um, what is that? They, we have people that will go and be located. It may be in the Department of Corrections or something. Okay. People, you know, they, they struggle to get jobs, mm -hmm. and, and not everybody would be felon friendly. We know the ones that are. We we know the ones that could will help you. We can get you back out there. You need to have a job. You need to work. It's 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 part of who we are. You know, we need to have that um, way to identify ourselves, I guess. And I know you've said that you all are fluid. You all have changed over the last few years. Mm -hmm. Used to very much be about static locations right. here. Right. And and that is something that is incredibly different that, it is. that you all have are moving. The library in, in Newcastle, mm -hmm. the Henry County Public Library, or some of the other um, job things that you all are doing. Right. What what drove that idea? Well, it was we don't want to just be brick and mortar. We need to be not everybody comes that way. Not everybody's the same. We look, we sit back, we look at the data. What works? How many people do we have coming in the office? Would we be better off to serve this community if we went someplace else? Library, food pantries, Department of Corrections, um, you know, different, different public places where they might go. They might not feel comfortable coming in there maybe. Maybe they want, you know, it's Everybody's so different, so we have to look at those numbers, see what's going on, how can we make it better? We're trying to get like a 10,000 uh, foot view, you know, and look down and, s and see what we need to do to make it better. Always changing, always evolving, always trying to help keep Eastern Indiana employed. Stephanie Clausen with Eastern Indiana Works. Thanks Thank for the you. time.
My thanks to the staff of Eastern Indiana Works for being part of today's show, particularly Mike Rao, Denny Cochran, and Stephanie Clausen. There are other members of the team. You will meet them in future episodes of Eastern Indiana Works. Next month, we're going to feature the JAG program. We did that last year, and we're going to go back to Ball State and talk to some of the students and some of the proctors and find out what's happening with them. Also remember, job seekers or employers, for more information, visit easternindianaworks.org. Thanks for watching.